So here in Final Cut Pro 10, we're gonna be creating this slide on type effect. So as you can see here, we're essentially gonna be animating our type so it's revealed one line at a time in Final Cut Pro 10. We're gonna do this using type and some of the masking tools. Um, and the nice thing about this is you've got complete control over where your type is going to expand out and how it's gonna flow in terms of the timing. So the first thing we're gonna do is add some type. So we're gonna come up to the top left here and bring up the type options. And we're looking for the, the basic type. So nothing fancy, we're gonna stick with the, the basic title type and just drop that onto our clip here. So once that's added, we're just gonna add a few lines of type here. So I'm just coming up to my inspector on the top right and I'm gonna type adding on type. And I want this to be aligned to the left, so I'm just gonna come into my inspector on the top right and align that to the left and then also increase the size of it. And the nice thing about this kind of animation is that you can work with things like the line spacing for your for your lines of type. So we can work with the line spacing. We have to highlight all the lines of type to work with the, the line spacing. We're working with one font so we don't have to set lots of boxes of type and we can position it nicely. So I'm gonna add this up to the, the top left here. And then the effect we're gonna use for this is the draw mask tool, which is a really excellent tool for masking out shapes, but also for creating animated reveals in Final Cut Pro 10. So we're gonna come across to the effects here on the right hand side, bring that up and we're looking under our video effects for the masks and the draw mask. So I'm gonna drag this on to my type. And essentially what I can do now is draw around this. So for each of these lines of type, I'm gonna have a couple of points that we animate out. So if you follow along with this to the end, then you'll see how this is gonna work if you've never used Bezier's before. I don't need to be 100% accurate with this, but I just need to make sure that these points will not bump into any of the types. So I'm gonna to need to nudge these, I think, in a second. But basically, I'm creating this kind of zigzag effect around the type. And this is kind of where we're gonna end up once the animation's finished. So I'm just gonna position these so that they're just at the end of each line of the type, okay? And it's these points that we're gonna animate. And you can see once they're animated, they're gonna reveal the type nicely, line by line. So I'll just pull this up. And as I said, I don't need to be completely accurate um, with this because of the speed we're gonna do the animation at. Um, it's not gonna be a big problem whether um, we have some jaggedy lines in there. So I'm gonna play through here. And it's around about this point that I want the, the animation to be finished. So I set up the point at which my animation is gonna be complete. So I'm gonna add a keyframe here at this point for the mask path. So I've added my draw mask and I need to come up to the inspector again on the right hand side and come in there to the video tab. And in here for the draw mask, I can add keyframes um, for the control points. So you can see here when I'm hovering over each of these elements, I can basically add um, keyframes to the ones where there's this little add keyframe or little diamond with a plus inside it on the right hand side. So I'm going to click that and so you can see now we've got that keyframe is added. We get a minus instead of a plus if we wanted to remove it. And now what we can go ahead and do is move back in time. What I'm trying to do when I play this through now is try and imagine when I want every word to be added line by line. So now once I've added my first keyframe I'm going to come back to the beginning and I'm going to drag these lines to the left I just try and keep them separate a little bit from the other lines and somewhat vertical when we move them to the left. And we'll have a look at how this, this works now. So if I play through here, you can see all that type is gonna be revealed at the same pace. So what I wanna do in fact, is I wanna uh, change the pace of a little bit of this. So around about here, I want this adding a line to be finished, so I'm gonna pull my clip here. And at the point at which this is finished, I still want my on and type line to be unchanged. So now you'll see we get that line coming on. So it's moving on. And then after, once adding is finished, so around about here, I want to play through and for the line on to be complete. So I'm gonna move these keyframes to the right and then these points to the left for the type line. And then the last one I want to finish is the type. So you can see the 
type one is happening maybe a little bit too fast. But what I can do now to change the timing of this is I can go in and have a look at the keyframes on the timeline. So if I right click on my type layer and go to show video animation, it's going to show me the keyframes um, for this type. So I can zoom in on the timeline here and just move back a bit. So basically each of these points I've got represents a point at which one of these lines of type has finished drawing. So I'm going to even these out a little bit. So using the selection tool, I'm just going to drag each of these keyframes. So when I was doing this, I was careful to make my changes so I only ended up with a few keyframes. Okay, so that's why we kind of worked backwards and then went through and kind of managed these layers. So now by kind of evening out each of these keyframes, we should be able to work through and get the pace of this right. So, okay. And we can select more than one keyframe at a time. So the keyframes of the shorter words are going to be closer. Okay. So you can see now we get this nice animation um, of these lines drawing on. Now, the other thing we could do here as well is add in a little mask feather. Um, and because we've got our lines away from the edge, if we add a little bit of feather of just a frame or two, it's only gonna affect the edge that's close to that line. So you can see here, I'm not getting any feathering unless I make this go negatively into the type. So I can increase this and it will just allow that feather to pop the type out. So I need to watch it at the beginning here. I can keyframe the feather as well. So, so that's just gonna smooth out a tiny bit around the edge, the edge of the type, just so we get this kind of little blend um, with the edge. So this is what we have in the end. Okay, and I think we could move that a little closer. And you can see how this works nicely, easily keeping the keyframes down by moving and only making changes at a number of different points in our timeline is important and keeping an eye on the video animation. In the first instance, don't worry about timing, just worry about the movement um, because you can always come back in and work on the, the timing of things as well. So that's how to do a custom type reveal in Final Cut Pro 10 or one way to do it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that tutorial and uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next one.